Lord. Help us to seek justice, love mercy, walk humbly with you, O Lord, our God, all our days. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> So, I have had quite the roller coaster week emotionally all this week. There have been some fantastic highs for me and some, and some kind of deep, dark lows. Y'all ever have one of those weeks where you've just kind of been on a, roll, a little bit of a roller coaster? Okay. So, you know what I'm talking about. We started out this last week with Beatles Sunday. And for, the, for those of you who were there, we had a great Sunday, didn't we? It's filled with joy, it's filled with fellowship, we were laughing, and it, you know, it's hard not to have that be the highlight of your week. Um, but you know, there were some parts of this week that were just a real downer, and, and I'm not just talking about Aretha Franklin now, like, that was, don't get me wrong, that was a blow, that was hard. I'm not just talking about, you know, hearing on the news about Catholic priest scandals, and more trials, and division, and, uh, there's a lot of fear-mongering and hatred out on the news right now. There's a lot to really kind of drag me down over the course of the week. So I've been on quite this emotional roller coaster. I've been stopping, talking with a bunch of y'all, and one of the things that I have heard all this week coming up again and again is this idea of loneliness. Loneliness being something that has been popping up in people's lives. Even if they're not personally lonely, this idea that just, as a society, we seem like we're struggling with more loneliness than we used to. Anybody else feel that way? Yeah, it's, it's been, um, there's, there's a book written by a gentleman from Harvard University years back now. It's called Bowling Alone by Robert Putnam. And Bowling <coughs> Alone was about what he said was the decline of social capital in our, in our country. He captured it perfectly when he used the idea of bowling. And, and he said, they used to be, everybody, when you went out and bowled, we all bowled, you went out and you joined a league. And you bowled together. And now, despite the fact that, you know, we still have the lanes, the balls, the rules of bowling have not changed at all, and yet when everybody goes, now we bowl alone. We don't join leagues anymore. And he was pointing that as just one little example. Um, now, there were lots of folks who said, no, 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 social capital's not declining. We have Facebook. Right? I've got 1,082 Facebook friends. My social capital's not declining at all. Right? Or folks would say, you know, I'm not more estranged from my family because I Skype with them now. And, so, and I was one of those folks. I was one of those folks 10 years ago who was saying, no, social capital's not on decline. We're not only. Um, but 10 years later, I don't think, 10 years later, I, it feels like society is about 10 years lonelier than it was. I don't feel like we've drawn closer together as, as a society. And I think, I think I made the connection of why that is this week, and it's because there's something you don't get from Facebook, there's something you can't get on Skype, and it's the bread of life. Now Jesus offered something really important when he gathered and he said, I'm offering you bread of life. And notice one of the things he did not ever do is he never went up to an individual and said, you and me, we're going to share the bread of life, right? He always, he always invited crowds, groups, whether it was 5,000 people or whether it was just his 12 disciples, he would always say, come, come and share the bread of life together. And they would break bread with each other and share it with each other. There's something fundamentally important about that, and I watch it play out here in the life of this community. And a few, and a few examples. One, one really obvious one was Beatles Sunday, wasn't it? Beatles Sunday was a great time. We all came here and gathered and did exactly what Jesus said. Come, take this bread, share it with each other. And we did that. We literally came up and we literally shared the bread of life up here. And then once more, we went over into the parish hall and we, and we laughed with each other and we told stories. We caught up with people that we hadn't seen for far too long and found out what was going on in each other's lives. We consoled people who were feeling kind of down. We met new people. We met new friends that we had never met before. We, and we introduced ourselves and made new connections. This was the bread of life at work. 
in the world because we all accepted that invitation. And another example of the bread of life very clearly is when we go and do some other place. And I know any of you home who volunteer at some other place, you'll back me up in this. But that is an amazing time where we go and we take the bread that we've been given and we share it with others who are hungry. People who otherwise feel this loneliness I'm talking about, who feel lost, unloved, unwanted. And then we go and we join in feeding them, breaking bread together, and, and literally telling them, you're not unwanted, you're not unloved here. You're not alone because we are here with you and we share this need. And you know what? It's not just the bread of life for the people we're feeding. It's the bread of life for the people who are doing the feeding, right? For those who are going. I, I, I see our folks that volunteer at some other place. And it fills them with life to be able to go and gather and be a team and say, we're making a difference in this world. We're going and we're feeding people and helping them feel loved. And I watch as that helps them feel loved. We do the same thing with our angels on assignment. You know our angels on assignment, this is for a group of people who are members of our church that for whatever reason they can't come and be here anymore. You all know how great St. Stephen is, isn't it? You all know how, how much fun it is to come and gather and then be fed every week here. Imagine how lonely it feels if you can't come anymore. Imagine how left out you feel if you don't have the ability to come and gather with us anymore. And so our angels on assignment do a profound thing when they take some of the bread that we share here and they go and they bring it to them in their homes and they say, you know what? You're still a part of us. You're still one of us. We still love you. You're here with us. And this bread that we're sharing, this is the bread that we all share with each other. And I've come here and we're sharing it. That literally has the ability to breathe new life into someone who otherwise is alone and lonely in this world. Now, one more example. I promise. Last example. Last example. Hurricane Harvey. And Hurricane Harvey, which, which, which could have been something that easily pulled us apart as a people. But instead, what happened? We, we grew closer together. Why? Because of the bread of life. We came here with each other and we gathered for meals with each other. Maybe our homes got flooded. Maybe, maybe we were tired from helping other people evacuate. But we came here and we gathered and we shared a meal. We had folks coming from as far away as Iowa or Pennsylvania. And they were coming here just to help us rebuild our homes. And, and we went and served them. This team from Iowa, they came, they came to, to, to uh, a dear family, the Polks, they came to their house and helped rebuild their home, and then what did the Polks do? They cooked a meal and brought it and shared it with that team from Iowa. And so not only did we give them the bread of life, but then they turned around and were able to then share it with others too. This is an amazing thing we get to do here that Jesus invites us to. When he says, come and receive the bread of life, he's talking about a cure for the loneliness and distance in the world. That when you live in a world where otherwise it's easy to say, hate your neighbor if you don't like them, if they're different than you. Where it's easy to say, someone hurt me, so I have the right to hurt back. When it's easy to say, I don't have enough for myself, so I'm going to hoard what I have because it's not enough. Then instead we gather here and we say, you know what, we've been given the bread of life. It fills us with life and then we want to go and take it and share it with others. And when we go and we do that, when we hear, when we come and we do that, we are fed. We are filled with life. And we help others be fed. We help them be filled with life. Thanks be to God for Jesus' invitation to come and receive the bread of life. Amen.